and welcome back to Heat Unleashed. These are the Carolina Reapers that have been growing for a couple of months now and obviously they have grown a lot especially these five this one is a little bit well, smaller but obviously they've grown a lot with fruit fuel my fertilizer but I had to put them in a little bit bigger container because the containers were <laughs> too small and it was all root but now they have some space to grow I placed them in one liter containers but they're already <laughs> rooting like crazy right now and obviously they are too big to place in the grow tank the size of the plant with a container is taller than the space between these two shelves but the sun is shining and it's enough light to grow them in front of the window but I still have a couple of problems I use some off the shelf potting soil I don't believe in buying very expensive stuff in this case potting soil because it doesn't make a lot of sense I'd rather buy high quality fertilizer and some cheap potting soil and make my profit that way than buying very expensive potting soil that only works for a couple of weeks and then I still have to fertilize it with fertilizer but in this case I use something from the supermarket that has a lot of fungus now so today I'm gonna treat the soil again with nematodes fertilize it again <laughs> because they need a fertilizer again and the reason I need to fertilize it the plants have a lot of roots and this potting soil is already drained of fertilizer so I need to fertilize it again with fruit fuel but in a very small amount I don't need to use the full dosage and just need to use for small plants right now a lot of people have something against removing flowers buds or fruits from very young plants a lot of people don't realize this but when you're growing containers this small or even smaller the nitrogen or fertilizer in the soil will be depleted in a very short period of time so the plants are sending out a signal from hey we need to reproduce otherwise we're gonna die so that's the reason why plants are developing fruits at a very early age it's not very healthy for a plant I know a lot of people say I'd rather have some fruits now but I'm not one of them I'd rather have a couple of kilos per plant at the end of the season than having a couple of fruits at the beginning of the season plants are not fully developing as they should when they're producing fruits on the plants at this age and flower drop at the well, beginning of the season when you place the plants outside in bigger containers it's just because there's more nitrogen in the potting soil that you're using then so I'd rather remove the flowers or even fruits right now introduce way more fertilizer so that the plants are used to get a lot of fertilizer and when they're ripe enough to get outside eh, when I place them in a bigger bucket or root pouch with a lot of potting soil they're already used to a higher nitrogen level so they're not going to stress out and then they're ripe enough to produce fruits or eh, buds flowers fruits and I actually found out over the years and when I'm doing it this way I have a very low risk of flower drop because the plants are already used to a high nitrogen level so first of all I'm gonna use a new product it's called Rootgaard not Asgard but Rootgaard it's a biostimulant and it prevents root rot stem rot but it also prevents a lot of fungus and bacteria that can be on the leaves and all that stuff and you can apply it by introducing to the roots or by uh, spraying it on the leaves and this is a very easy product I have 3 liters of water and I'm gonna put 75 milliliters of root guard into it I'm gonna add about uh, 3 milliliters of V booster This is the new version, it's V2. It also can be applied to the leaves. So that's the difference between V1 and the V2 version. Next thing is fertilizer. So I'm gonna use a small plant dosage. And it's, I don't know, six, 1.8, this. Thank you. 
One of the things I've said a lot is when you're using a food fuel, you need to dissolve the first one and wait until it's fully dissolved and then put in the next one. So I mixed up a big batch. Obviously the plants don't consume three liters of water. But the potting soil is pretty dry. So I put in half a liter of <laughs> water and it's already going down. So I'm gonna wait five minutes. And after five minutes, I'm taking this one out and putting a fresh one in. So you can see the difference. The bottom part is wet, the top part is dry. Rootgard is a very powerful product. So you only need it in the beginning and then you spray it on the leaves because it kills off bad funguses and bad bacteria especially pythium which is very damaging for peppers, tomatoes and even old plants that are very fragile at the root area and it's actually developed for monsteras and designer plants that are very fragile and when you grow stuff with tissue culture the most beautiful plants are often the most fragile of them all so i'd rather use a product like that and protect my plants than having plants that are developing root rot over the period of time which is a very annoying problem that's not even easy to fix because a lot of people only are using uh, stuff against root rot when they're having root rot and guess what it's still gonna kill the plants eventually so I'd rather inoculate the soil and spraying on the leaf right now and not having the problem at a later age the best part of it all both of these products are fully organic and fully vegan, so there's nothing damaging about it. When you're growing peppers or tomato, I get it when you say, I'm not gonna reuse a root guard, it's pretty expensive. When you're growing monsteras, philodendron, or even uh, tissue culture, or uh, guess what? That stuff will <laughs> save you a lot of money. And the last one. So the water line dropped a lot. So I think I'm about 150 milliliters to 200 milliliters per plant each third day or so. One of the questions I get a lot is, why do you like growing peppers and tomatoes? And I always say the same. My channel is called Dutch Pep Lovers. I love growing peppers and the science behind it. But I also have a new channel and it's called Nutrico Solutions. And there it's more specialized in the science behind fertilizers, how to use it and the results you can have with fruit fuel or proline or even the organics because these are fully organic and fully vegan. So yes, I love growing peppers and I love to talk about fertilizers. So therefore, two channels, Dutch Pep Lovers and Nutrigro Solutions. One of the questions I get a lot is, why does Nutrigro Solutions only sell dry fertilizers for the except of the organics? And there is a pretty simple reason for it. When you buy a package, it's all fertilizer. The NPKs are always high. Yeah, I'm not gonna sell very expensive PDA to people because, well, that's what you're buying when you buy a liquid-based fertilizer. It contains a very low amount of NPK. When you have, for example, an NPK in a bottle of one liter, that's say 222, it's a total of 6% of NPK in a bottle. So the person that makes a batch has to put in enough minerals just to create a total percentage of 6% of NPK. That's not a lot because guess what? 94% of it is, well say 95% is water. That 1%, most of the time it's a stabilizing agent and a little bit of trace minerals. So you're paying for a lot of 93% by the way. But you're paying for a lot of water. And uh, water is cheap and I'm not gonna sell Perrier. So I'm not gonna do that. So I rather sell a product which has a high MPK and it's all minerals, no water, no annoying stuff with bottles and all that stuff or blowing up bottles. And people can dilute it if they think the MPK is too high. But when you have a bottled fertilizer, liquid-based fertilizer with a low MPK value, guess what? If you dilute it too much, 
it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> There's nothing left. So I'd rather sell people a dry fertilizer than a liquid-based fertilizer. Also, a liquid-based fertilizers are known to burn plants. Not because of the MPK, but bases or acids has to be introduced to stabilize the total mixture. So when you're mixing up a batch, and you have to stabilize it yourself with pH up or pH down, you're introducing a lot of bases or acids. And when a container with potting soil dries out, the concentration of acids rises. So, <laughs> yeah. So I rather sell a product that's all minerals. Then selling a lot of water for a very expensive price that you're gonna flush down your drain.